super exciting. Today, we're going to learn something new. I have Miss Isabel Guarino, and hopefully I did did okay with your name, but she is uh, she is the queen of residential assisted living, and that's something that's kind of been interesting to me. I've sort of dabbled and looked at it just a little bit, but didn't understand enough of it to, to kind of jump into that world, so super excited to have you here. I figure it's kind of like the next evolution after my student housing, so very excited to have you on today and chat about it, and hopefully I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn a lot about it, and everybody else listening, hopefully they can learn something too, but mostly it's all about me, so super, super, ex- <laughs> super excited to have you here, and and like ask you all the tough questions. So, but introduce yourself for everybody who's listening, give, give yourself a proper introduction and kind of how you got into this. I love that. Well, I'm Isabel Garino, the COO of Residential Assisted Living Academy. About, gosh, it's almost 14 years ago. My grandmother wow. fell and broke her hip and uh, the doctor was like, she can't go home alone. She needs 24 seven care. She needs help yeah. with her you know, activities of daily living. And my dad had been a real estate investor for, 30 years up till that point. And so and we're searching for a place suitable for her. Everything was disgusting, right? Smelled bad, hair was bad. They were expensive with waiting lists and it was just disappointing. And he did quick math and he's like, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna pay five grand a month for her to live in one of these or I could own it. She could live for free and I can cash flow 10 grand a month. So not knowing what we were doing, he purchased his first one about Four years later, we started teaching and training people how to do this. And I started building that company with him. He passed in 2021 and I got those three businesses passed down to me. So three yeah. cash flowing you know, assets that are pretty passively run. We've been training people how to do this all across the country. So I really love this industry. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. You know, my mom's been in some, you know, she's had to go into some short term care a few times. My dad was in long term care before he died. And you're right, like some of them are absolutely horrendous. You know, my, uh, you know, not to take away from your story, but, you know, my mom was was in the hospital and they put her in like this recovery rehab place. And she literally called me in tears, please get me out of here. Like there's mold on the wall. Like it was gross. I mean, it was absolutely terrible. And uh, luckily they had a newer wing and we got her moved over there. But so, so the first place that you bought, was it like, like, what, what, like, tell me about that. Like, like, yeah. you know, I get that I want to buy this and I want to get involved, but like that process kind of, what was the property like? I'm, I'm fascinated to know. Yeah. So it was an already up and running 10 bed, okay. 10 bath residential home being okay. used for senior housing. So it was already licensed. They already had staff in it, a licensed uh-huh. administrator who runs the day to day and it had seniors living in it already. So we purchased the real estate and the business. And this is 10 years ago. So it was about $500,000 for the real estate and 50K for the business. But we were up and running cash flowing right away. Yeah, cash flowing asset, right? Fascinating. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Um, but so you don't know anything about that. Like, that's not your background, right? So, yeah, <laughs> yeah like, aren't you were like, what are the regulations? You must have to be oh, in yeah. the state, like, all these things that are going to be new to you, right? Yes, it was terrifying. And we were making mistakes all along the way, right? Yeah. The good thing is, is that as the real estate owner and the business owner, really, you're not doing much. And that's probably a good thing for us real estate investors who want to get involved with this, because you're working on the business, not in the business. The licensed administrator, that's the person who's somewhat equivalent to like a property manager. So okay. they do all the hiring and the firing of your caregivers. They do, you know, the onboarding and the training and mm-hmm. they help the home stay full. So they're marketing the home, touring the home with new families, doing the intake, wow. all that good stuff. So really we came and it was already kind of operational and working without us. The mm-hmm. woman who owned it, she just needed to get out of the business at that point. But when we did our next home, we just bought a single family and converted it to become. And that starting from scratch was a lot yeah. harder. <laughs> really? Well, sure. Because you got to make the conversions and get it all, I'm assuming, ADA approved, right? For wheelchairs and all that type of stuff. Now, the property that you were looking to convert, like what were you looking for in that property? Yeah. The biggest thing you look for is the demographics of the area. So okay. you want it to be where the adult children live. So the 50 to 70 year old who's upper middle class, who makes twice the median income within a five to 10 minute radius of them. 
because sure. they don't want to send mom 40 minutes down the road. They want it five minutes on their way home from work. Right. So demographics is key. And then you're looking for larger upscale, more bigger and beautiful properties, basically. Think right. 300 to 500 square feet per residence. So with 10 residents, minimum a 3,000 square foot home, upwards of 5,000 is very comfortable. So are you, your, your ideal thing is, of course, to find a place with 10 bedrooms, but that probably doesn't exist. So there is there some remodeling that's going on and you're going in trying to like relay things out? Exactly. So it's yeah. very hard to find something that's already that way. So maybe you're finding something that's a 6.5. That's the first home that we converted to become. It was already a 6.5. It's already 5,600 square feet. And it's just, OK, we don't even have to do an addition. We just have to chop it up differently and right. run here to get more bedrooms and bathrooms. Now it's a 10 bed, 10 bath, you know, so oh it, it took a moment to get there. Still has a living room, still has a dining room, still has a kitchen. It's still a home. And that's yeah. the big difference is that these big facilities, which we all think of, that's the option. That's the only option, right? Mm -hmm. It's not. There are 30,000 group homes across the country today. But there's oh. no big sign out front, right? You've probably driven by them a hundred times and you would have right. never even noticed. Wow. And so are there like zoning issues when you when you decide to do this where you can can you just make that conversion or do you have to you know, make sure the city's good with it and all that type of stuff? You do get it licensed through the state. And so that is important to know what the rules and regulations are in your area. But for most parts of the country, it's still zoned R1, R2. It's still zoned residential. Really? So it's not converting it to anything else. It's just, it, it's similar to Airbnb, student housing, shared housing, all these other forms of rental properties and single family investment opportunities. Oh, wow. Well, I guess, yeah, I mean, we have student housing just on a regular street. It's, you know, just happens to be a big old house. So I would imagine you're mostly looking for one level properties. You don't want people, older people don't want to be going up and down steps. Yep. If it's multi-level, you have to add a residential elevator or a chairlift, and that can get quite pricey, about 30 to 50 K for a residential elevator. Oh, wow. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, that's that's a lot. So this house, did you? I mean, you must have had to got a good portion of it to kind of relay out the rooms and everything. Yeah, it was a funky house, that particular one. It had like this massive living room that was like already 1,200 square feet. And it was like, what wow. is this? So the yeah. home had sat on the market for a while because a regular family walked in there and they said, how do I furnish this? Like, what is this? There's five fans in this room. Like, this is weird, right? But we walked yeah. in and we were like, bingo, this is perfect. We can do yeah. this. So the good thing about this investment opportunity is you're not looking for what every other single family home investor is looking right. for. That's what I was thinking. You want something unique. You want something different. You don't care if there's a power line out front or it backs up to the grocery store parking lot. Like, doesn't matter. You know, it's yeah. okay if there's the fire station next door. None of those things really impact us. If That's it's on a busy street, amazing. I get more eyes coming by every day. You know, yeah. the family with, you know, the soccer ball and the kid, that is the, the worst situation ever for us. Right. That's amazing. That's fascinating. You know, one thing I've always, you know, when, when talking about wholesalers is, you know, there's a property for a person for every property. You know, there's always a small segment that wants to fire damage house. Or there's a small segment that wants the eight bedroom, 10 bath house. Right. So you're that person like you're yep. you're the one. Yep. Wow. That funky home. Yeah. So when you're relaying it out, is there you know, do you have to have like the special, uh, you know, like hospital flooring, you know, that doesn't you know, what a non permeable, whatever. I know there's a, there's a specific thing and do you have to do special stuff in the kitchen? Like how special do you have to make it? You actually don't, you don't need to be ADA compliant. You want to be as close to that as possible though, because right. all those things help keep your senior safe. So smooth sure. clean floors are great, but we just use LTV, you know, hardwood, it soaks up liquid, not great mm -hmm. for senior housing. Carpet sure. soaks up liquid and bubbles over time. Not great. So LTV is fine. And then the kitchen, it's a normal, regular kitchen, just like you or I may have in our homes. Mm -hmm. Your caregivers who are there doing the 24-7 care, medication management, cooking and cleaning, they're cooking in the kitchen just like they would for, you know, two kids, mm -hmm. a dog and their partner. Yeah. So no like special fridge or, you know, sub-zero, you know, stove or anything crazy like that, commercial grade stuff. You don't need that. If you want it, you can. And a lot of people do extra fridges and freezers in the garage. But like yeah. most of my friends growing up also had that. So it's yeah. not so uncommon. But when yeah. you're feeding 10 people, 
you are going to have a lot of extra food because you're usually buying in bulk. So extra fridges and freezers are great in the garage, but nothing crazy. Yeah. Interesting. And you're furnishing it. So just normal furniture, special beds, like what kind of, and I'm sorry, I know I'm asking like some the most rudimentary questions, but I'm legitimately <laughs> interested in how to you know? Yeah, hey, this podcast is for you, David. Okay, yeah. so you right. are getting all your questions answered. I love it. You have a podcast is to bring on cool people so you can you know network with them and learn some stuff. That's that's exactly. what I was told. You know, exactly. hi everybody. Like, just along for the ride. I love it. Okay, so in the home, furniture, fixtures, equipment, right? You are probably gonna let's say there's ten residents. You probably want to furnish four of the ten bedrooms to start. Hmm. Why that is is because when person number one moves in you have a bed dresser nightstand table tv chair whatever it is and they say well mom really wants to bring her dresser you say uh -huh. okay that's wonderful so now you move that dresser to bedroom number five and then uh -huh. the next person hey we actually bought a medical bed five years ago can we bring the medical bed here instead of using your bed okay so instead of having three rooms that are you're going to go pay for storage for brand new furniture uh -huh. do four slowly move and then fill up as you're going along. So yeah. you are gonna furnish the bedrooms, the kitchen, the living room, dining room, all regular you know, furnishings. And then I would say in the kitchen, one big tip we always give our students is like, you're feeding 10 people. Don't make this more backbreaking work for your caregivers. You need a lot of plates, a lot of forks, right? Like yeah. to be able to eat two to three meals without having to do dishes, you know, every yeah. single meal. So you have, yeah a lot more things within the home, but it's still pretty regular. Wow. So those are little tips that tell me you really do this business, like the thing with yeah. the bedroom, and, you know, like you can tell, you can, you know, that that's fascinating that you're an actual operator. And, and so you really know this stuff. So the people that you're looking for, for, for patients or clients, residents, residents, yeah. I guess is the right word. Um, like at what, you know, what, What's their health status? Like, I don't know. I don't know the right word to ask that. Like, like how capable are they? You know, great question. Typically, you are not moving in for funsies, right? You're moving in. You're moving in because you need help with three to five ADLs, activities of daily living. So that's bathing, toileting, transferring. You need uh -huh. help taking your medication, eating, walking, all those different things. So yeah. what happens as a senior? falls and breaks their hips, gets in a car accident, or memory starts to go. They're running around, you know, or doing something that they shouldn't be doing. And the family, yeah. or the doctor says, you cannot live alone. It's unsafe for you to live alone. Yeah. In that moment, you have three options, right? Someone's got to quit their job and go take care of mom or dad full time, which in this economy, people aren't quitting their job anymore, right? Like yeah. that, you, you just can't really do that. Number two, you can get in-home care. A one-on-one -on -one caregiver comes to live with you and take care of you, which is insanely expensive. Average yeah. rate of twenty-seven dollars an hour. So if you need twenty-four-seven right. care, twenty-seven times twenty-four times thirty days in a month, that's nineteen thousand dollars a month. Right. Plus the mortgage or lease, the food, the activities, the cable. Like people who promise their loved ones, oh, you can stay at home. I'll get you care. It's like good luck. Most people can't afford that. Yeah, because it's sure going to cover that, right? Well, it, mm, it, it may cover some of it, but you know only 10% of the population has long-term care insurance. Oh. Yeah. Most people don't have it. They're relying right. on their cash, their savings, their IRA, or selling their physical yeah. home to pay for their care needs. And uh -huh. many, many seniors are relying on their kids. They say, yeah. you know, I took care of you. It's your turn to take care of me. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you raise your kids right and they don't just dump you off and and leave you you'd be you'd be surprised how many horror stories there are it's terrible i, I, but believe it. I, I do believe it it's, it's terrible we you know in our business we handle transactions so we a lot of deals where people have passed away and, and hear all kinds of crazy stories so so yeah this isn't the fun retirement home it's not the board games and trips to the mall no when they're living in the home, they need help, right? But you yeah. still do have activities within the home. Senior yoga, pet therapy, music therapy, uh -huh. art, gardening, cooking, all these yeah. things to keep them, you know, active in their last years of life. 
the average stay in the home is three and a half years. So it's not like it's like a six month, like you're, you're about to pass. They are typically staying for quite some time and they still have, you know, some energy left in them to a certain extent. They just need yeah. help with those different things. They can no longer live alone safely. Yeah. Are you ever bringing in short term people just kind of like recovery people, kind of like my mom had, you know, or is it or is it just you just want the long term people? If you have an open bed, I always tell our students like, hey, if somebody needs respite care, which I think is what you're referring to, right? A short term, high pay, short stay, then it's like fill that bed, fill that bed, even if they're staying for three weeks and you continue to market for another senior who is going to stay longer. But I'd rather have the bed filled. And also, Mm -hmm. if that person is confident and comfortable in our home, whenever they do need assisted living, they're more than likely going to choose our home to come to because they already had a great time there. Yeah. And I guess that makes sense, right? Marketing for the next resident, you know, hey, Penelope, we will have someplace for your mom in three weeks, right? I don't, that's probably not unreasonable. I don't know that do people like come visit today and like drop mom tomorrow? Yeah. About yeah. percent is a one to two day move in. Oh, Wow. Wow. So it resonates with me. My mom is 78 and on oxygen and lives by herself. So I literally have a girl who goes over there and spends at least three hours a day to just to make sure she's eating and, you know, doing doing all the things. Right. But but yeah, I mean, I get it. This is this is something that my brother and sisters, you know, we were looking at that is a reality. It's at some point down the road here, you know. Huge. You know, the baby boomer, 76 million in that generation, they're just barely starting to come into assisted living. It's right. still the violent generation and there's much, much less of them. But we're currently 1.3 million beds short. So wow. we can't build these beds fast enough. Like the demand that's coming into this market does not, it, it completely outweighs the supply. It's Mm -hmm. This is like the biggest opportunity of our lifetimes and it's right in front of us. I mean, if you follow the wealth at all, you're following the boomers, right? The last 70 plus years, they, they create all the trends in the market and I'm going to follow them until their last days because that's the money, right? That's what you want to do. Wow. So what are what are the biggest barriers of entry for somebody like me who's just a normal everyday real estate investor? I got some rentals. You know, this sounds amazing. One, because our job as investors is to help people. Right. So like like obviously, you know, we want we want to help people. And, you know, thinking of people like my mom. Right. We don't want her in a bad place with molding moldy stuff. But like it would seem like there's a lot of complicated moving parts here. Right. Like what are what are some of the biggest problems that you see for people? Yes. There are a lot of parts to this. So that's where we teach people how to do it because there's so yeah. much to learn and there's so many steps involved. And there's is really good, bad, and ugly, right? So all along the way, it's so important that you know so much before you get started. This isn't just like, I'm gonna build it and they're gonna come, right? It's not the yeah. field of dreams. So knowing all the steps along the way, licensing can be difficult in certain states. It's filling out paperwork, but have you renovated the home properly? You know, are you keeping it up to code? All that good stuff. Hiring yeah. amazing, competent, incredible caregivers and administrators. That's typical, yeah. right? We live in a market where people don't want to work these days and they're getting yeah. 25 bucks to go work at Chick-fil-A. So how do I compete with that? Right. Yeah. It's, it's tough. Hiring can be tough. And then, you know, I always say this. The hardest part of any business is people, right? If business was just paperwork, we would all be business owners. People are the hard things. (laughs) So it's not just the seniors. A lot of times it's the families that come with them, right? It's the families, their high expectations, the emotions involved. There's so much guilt, anger, resentment. Uh, There's a lot going on when they bring their loved one to you. So people are the hardest thing in any business yeah i can imagine it just runs the the entire spectrum of you know yeah like angry you know they want you to you know you know treat it like it's the waldorf astoria all the way to the other side of the apathy you know dropping mom or dad off and never coming back right that's just got to be just absolutely heartbreaking to see that We often, you know, it's really interesting when you see the homes that accept government funding, that's often where you find more people who don't visit their loved ones. They usually Uh move them in much later in their stages of dementia or declining health. 
in our yeah. care homes where we're doing typically above average, so more higher end, more luxury, they're usually moving mom or dad in sooner. They're usually visiting often. <laughs> And they're not signing up to pay six, seven K a month if they can't afford it. Like this is these are usually affluent families that they're ready to go. They know that this is the cost of care and this is the reality of our yeah. world today. And is that that that's what their out of pocket is? Can be average six to seven thousand dollars? Easily. Average in our country today is five thousand three hundred and fifty dollars per month per, per resident. So depending wow. on where you are. Right, Hawaii's yeah. average is nine thousand three hundred forty. Oh so, it, it, it where you are in the country it varies greatly, and then where you are within your state, right? Yeah. So, like you know, California's got averages in the nine, and Stockton's averages in the three. So it it just wow. ranges greatly. Wow, so that's fascinating that you can know, so that you can, if you're looking at a property, you can kind of project what, you know, what what the income would be. Yes, there's a fabulous website called genworth.com forward slash cost of care. When you go there, you can type in the area where you live or where you like to invest and it will show you the average rates in that area. And the reason I love this site so much is there's a toggle button. So you can like bump it up and basically say like, my mom's not gonna need care for another 25 years. Well, how much is it gonna cost then? You know, the cost the of care, what? Just by the rate of inflation, this is what it would be. Oh, it's, it's astronomical. It's gone up 84% over the last 20 years. Oh my and, goodness. and the boomers aren't even into the market yet. So we're literally talking about doubling the amount of people who need it. We're already short. We don't have enough beds. The, yeah. It's just skyrocketing. So when people are like, well, real estate's expensive. How do I make single family investing work? Yeah, it is difficult with almost every other form of single family investing right now. Like, I don't right. know how many real estate investors are making it work a couple hundred bucks on each door. That's, that's, that's crazy to me. You yeah. know, our homes making 10 K a month on the low end, that's worth it. That's worth going through all the hustle and bustle to make it happen. Wow. And primarily, you know, converting single family residents, that's the best plan. What about like some of these, I don't want to say abandoned, but like commercial properties, I guess, would that be too expensive to run all the plumbing and all that kind of stuff? I don't know. It, it could be too expensive, but the main reason that we focus on single family investing is because our company motto is to do good and do well. You know, when, when we put ourselves back in that place that we felt with my grandmother and looking at these facilities and these buildings with long hallways and impersonal staff where your loved one's just a number. And it uh -huh. was like, we don't want this. Like we, she grew up in a home. She deserves yeah. to be in a home. If it can't be her own home, at least it's still a home, not yeah. home like a literal home, right? And it's like, that's so important. So in, in a big facility, like a Brookdale Sunrise Atrium, the typical ratio is 30 seniors to one caregiver. That's sick. If, if it was kids, that'd be illegal, right? right? But our country does not care about seniors the way it cares about children, and that's wrong. So in right. our home, we recommend a four to one or five to one ratio. So even though you might be paying the same in the Brookdale and ours, the care quality, the food quality, the attention is so much greater that actually majority of our clients come from being disgruntled at yeah. facilities. Really? So, wow. Interesting. Okay. So, so you're not interested in, in building, you know, bigger places. You you really love those, those small ones. Do you try to keep them all in one, one geographic area? Or are you open to kind of doing it anywhere across the country? You know, our three homes we own, they're in Phoenix, Arizona, within 20 to 40 oh, minutes. From each other. I came from Phoenix. I was stuck there the other day. Bad weather. And I was there for almost all week. I flew in Monday night and didn't leave until the following Monday. That everyone was stuck was the weather from that one. Yeah, I got stuck an extra night, but yeah, it was it was good. It wasn't too hot. I heard it got it's getting really hot this week, so I guess well, I got I, out just. A I just landed an hour ago, and it was one oh four when I landed. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it was a hundred to one hundred and one, maybe. I think it might have popped to one oh two last week, but uh, they said it'd be like one ten this week, which is just brutal. Yikes. So. Yikes. Wow. But when when we're looking at these homes, you know, we showed students how to do this all across the country. We, you know, have taught people in all 50 states how to do this. So you can definitely do this anywhere. You do not have to be in Phoenix or Florida or wherever you think old people live, yeah. right? You can be people, are people are everywhere, right? <laughs> yes. And people are aging everywhere. I always say that. I'm like, 
hey, raise your hand if you're getting older or know someone who is, right? Because the reality is if you grew up in Boston your whole life, you're staying in Boston. You're not going to magically move to Florida just because you turn 85. Like that's that's not going to happen. It's the window to relocate. Yeah. So yeah. we encourage people to have a three pack, three homes, 20 to 40 minutes of each other, just like we do. And the reason we encourage this is because you can share your resources, like your staff, your mm-hmm. licensed administrator. It is not yeah. time for them to oversee one home. Really? Two to four is pretty average of how many they can oversee. So three pack close to each other. It also gives you variety. So if one home's full, you can, you know, recommend the other one. If one's less expensive, one's more expensive, you can kind of move uh-huh. people up and down that pipeline based yeah. on their wants and needs. So what would make, if you had a three pack of, of properties within a 30 mile radius, what would make one more or less expensive? What, like what, would it be amenities? Would it be location? Like what, what would change that? You're right on the money. It's amenities and it's location, right? That if you're in a higher end area, Guess what? Mm-hmm. If the real estate's more expensive, the cost of care is more expensive. So they go hand in hand with each other. And then amenities, that's a really important one. You know, we have a level three home, a level four, and a level five. In the level five, there's a private chef. There's activities mm-hmm. every day. The backyard's almost an acre big. There's a pool, there's a basketball court, there's all this amazing stuff. In the level three home, it's 3,000 square feet. The kitchen is small. You know, the backyard's smaller. There's a nice little rose garden, but the caregiver's doing the cooking and the cleaning, and it's just very different experiences. They're also in very different parts of town, so they attract different people. But if someone comes to tour this upscale one, and then they tell me, I really can't afford that. Do you have any other options? Now I can offer the level, you know, nice. down or the level down, and we make it work from there. Wow. And I love the idea of having three, four, five kind of bundled all together because at some point, if you wanted to exit, you could certainly probably have these and sell them off to, to somebody else as a turnkey business. And that's a beautiful thing right there. We have a lot of students who come in with that mindset and their goal is to have a 10 pack and sell them off or right. have a student who's on home number 26 and their goal is to have a hundred and package them up, sell it to the hedge funds. So it's the sky is the limit. You can do whatever. And we really show people just how to get into the game. And then it's like your yeah. dreams can take you wherever you want with this. There's nothing yeah. to stop it. So if you're not buying something turnkey like you did that's already operational, and I know this is going to be so wildly varied, but like how long does it take to get a unit up and running? Yeah, great question. There's really four ways to get started. So one is buying the existing. And I would say from start to finish, that's probably three to six months because buying a business it takes a minute, right? Sure. Oh, yeah. Two, right? Buying single family, converting to become typically six to 12 months. Three, if you're buying land and building custom from the ground up, it could be 12 months to three years. It just depends on the project. And four, if you're going to lease a home to use for this, so somebody else has got mm-hmm. the real estate ready to go. You're just going to come mm-hmm. in and lease it from them and operate the business within their home. That could easily be three months. Yeah, but that's prob- you're not typically going to be able to customize it probably the way that you would normally want to. Nope. That's typically for somebody who has less capital up front and maybe they're right. wary of purchasing the real estate. They want to get in and they want to do this and they want to get their feet wet. So they're saying, let me leverage that maybe this isn't the right time to buy or I don't have, you know, whatever the situation is, but they want to yeah. get in. That's a great way. That's less expensive and faster to get in. Right. So, Isabel, this isn't really a newbie strategy. This isn't, you know, this isn't the no money down. Like, this is not that. You have to have some resources for sure to at least to get started. Right. Like, yeah, we, we show people how to use other people's money. Right. OPM. We a lot of our students use SBA 7A loans. A lot oh. of our students do syndications. Right. You can get bank loans. You can use private money, hard money, whatever you want. But most of our students, I would say, do SBA 7A syndication or private money. A lot okay. of our students don't use their own money. We show you how to do this without using your own money because, you know, we're, we're good friends with the Kiyosaki family. And Robert taught us you're being lazy if you use your yeah. own money. I love Robert. He, the last time I saw him, he, we, he was speaking at an event there in Phoenix. So, yeah, yeah that was my question is, you know, what type of funding options are there to, to be able to do this? Yes, lots of options. And we we even go through in our training, like how to put the business plan together, what your pitch needs to be about, what your numbers should be looking like. So really A to Z, how to get started and do this without your own capital. Of course, you have skin in the game. It's going to be easier up front. But having the right team behind you who knows how to kind of set you up for success is, is always the best place to be. 
Yeah, I would think having the right team is going to be important. I would I would think there's a lot of places where you could go sideways here, you know, and, and, and yeah, either get one, just lose some money, but two, you get into some legal or, you know, some issues with the state. Yeah, you know, it, the good thing is, is that under the Federal Fair Housing Act, we are a protected class because these seniors are considered disabled. So an yeah. angry neighbor, a city, a county, a state can't tell you no. And so that's a beautiful thing. But yeah. we also found once we got into this industry that there are issues that come up. Thank God and knock on wood, right? In 10 years in this business, thousands of students across the country, we nor any of our students have been sued because we focus so heavily and hard on safety, procedures, and policy. There are wow. cameras up everywhere. There is so many protocols. We are so slow to hire and quick to fire. There is no funny business happening because there is too much stuff happening wow. in the other facilities. We're not gonna be bunched in with them. And the reality is when you really care and you put sure. that first, it changes things. Wow, I love it. I love the strategy and you know, again, you know, what we do as investors is try to help people. So this is the, the perfect outlet for that, for, you know, a lot of people who seemingly have no option. Also, it seems to be this great wide, wide open ocean of opportunity, especially coming in the next you know couple of years. It really is. We, we always say like 10 years ago when we started training on this, there was literally nobody else training on it. And uh, we, we had no one to guide us along the way. And we were just making mistakes left and right, figuring it out and writing down, like, we got to tell people this and tell people this. And so it's really fun nowadays when I go on social media and I see other people educating and teaching on this, other people yeah. getting into the game. And I've never heard of them or seen them. And I'm like, yay, more people. Like, people would think I'm, like, anti-competition. No. Oh, no, I don't want that. I'm like, this is great because if you're doing it yeah. right, I want you in this industry. If you're doing right. Wrong, go away. <laughs> yeah. Well, you said 1.3 million beds short. I mean, that's, an, you know, on our best day, we couldn't fill all of those beds, right? So you're, you're going to have to, especially 10 at a time or 15 at a time, you need a lot of, a lot of facilities. We need the help. And so our mission actually at the RAL Academy is to positively impact 10 million seniors through providing high quality residential assisted living. And we can't do that alone. And that's why not only do, you know, everybody who's in our company and at our trainings, they all invest in these homes and own and operate them themselves. But we share with as many people as we can because truly the seniors in this, you know, country, they need us. They need us to step up right now. Wow. Talk a little bit about kind of, you know, and I want to, we can wrap it up with that or we can keep going, but like how profitable is this business model? Yeah. So let's just go average, you know, rate $5,500 per month per person, right. 10 residents bringing in 55,000 on an average 10 bed home. You know, these days your mortgage is easily going to be, you know, $10,000 and the expenses to run the home, including your staff, your food, your activities, your cable, you know, your liability insurance, everything probably runs you 35 grand a month. So that average home would cash flow you $10,000 a month. Now, yeah. You're typically allowed to have somewhere between six and 16 residents in the home, depending on where you are in the country. If you're in Texas, it's 16, New Jersey, 16, right? And so it, it just ranges. It can go a lot more than that. We've got students cash flowing 40K a month on really? one home. <laughs> yeah. And we've got other students who, who are in that 10K range. That's just like the base average what these homes typically are bringing in. Oh my goodness. That's pretty, and that's in 10 K that's, that's a turn. Like you're, that's completely passive. You're not over there cutting the grass. Like that is completely run by the administrator. Yes. I spend about five hours a week on all three of my care homes. So I'm doing things like having a weekly meeting with the administrator, making sure yeah. things aren't, you know, on fire and maybe yeah. looking at a payroll or, you know, checking out the marketing and doing different things like that. But it's like five hours a week. And honestly, this is bad, but I probably only visit the homes like every other month at this point. Yeah. I don't go to rentals anymore either. So yeah, like I get it. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I love nice, that's the way to be. Yeah, no, I, I think it's fantastic. And I love that there's there's so much opportunity um, out there. But it, it is important to find somebody that can kind of guide you through this. Yeah. Right. Like that, and, which is 100 percent the reason why I've never done is because I don't understand it enough. I wouldn't know who to hire, what to do, what paperwork, like any of those things. So um, so I know a lot of people are going to be interested in this. What is the best way for them to find you and talk to you or follow you or like, like how do they learn more information? 
Yeah, we are on all the social medias at RAL Academy. And if you want to schedule a call with me or the team, you can go to AL101.com and free webinars, free books, and you can schedule calls there. Wow. I'll make sure that we put all of that in the show notes because that's amazing. I absolutely love this. I love what you're doing. Again, it kind of hits very, you know, near and dear to my heart because my mom is, is, you know, kind of approaching that age. So, you know, I know that this is going to be something that, that we need to do. And, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a, a, an issue in, you know, obviously in our country with, you know, making sure that we're, that we're taking care of our seniors and, you know, and treating them with the respect that they deserve for, you know, for everything that they did for us. Absolutely. It's so important. Cool. Awesome. Well, Miss Isabel, thank you so much for popping on here. I really enjoyed enjoyed chatting and, and learning more about it. And we'll make sure that we send everybody to the website to get some more information. Awesome. Thanks for having awesome. me.